unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Everybody just raise your voice and speak to God. Raise your voice and speak to God. Your eyes on the sparrow And your head, it comforts me From the ends of the earth to the dead
She's the angry Your holy presence Living in me Seems my tender
he sits in the car in me. Mare Basatala. He bathes in me. Seven fifty a.m. to about eight a.m. this morning, as instructed by God, there is somebody here. You have a disease. Doctors have failed to find it, but you're in pain every day. Come, even now you're in pain. Come now. I want to pray for you now. Now. Doctors have failed to find it. Even now you're in pain. You've been in pain almost every day. You went to doctors, they couldn't diagnose it. Come. Come. Is he the one who has come to sit? There's a person, the doctors, you've been to doctors, they can't find your disease. But it's a pain. Either one? Come. Even you? Stand here, don't worry. <laughs> Even you? of you has a problem with breathing it's a, something in the chest the other one I'm going to begin with you how long has it been oh yeah now months Six. okay put up your hand I'm going to begin with you that pain lives today it lives today it lives today it lives today there's another woman, your child was taken and you've been looking for your child. They were taken, the young boy, he was about eight-ish. Your child was taken and you've been looking for your son. You don't know where they took your son. I want to pray with you. Come. All of you are sick. <laughs> eh? You're deep. Raise your hands. I speak healing right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Come. Raise your hands. Receive your healing now. Now. Now, now, not tomorrow, now, in Jesus' mighty name, raise your hands, right now in the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now, right now, right now, 
right now. Right now. Check them. Eh? Those ones I've prayed for. Are they feeling pain? Is the pain gone? Is that pain gone? Huh? It's gone. Okay. Are you feeling pain now? Was it here? Is it gone? Are you still feeling pain? It's still there? Okay, stand here. I'm going to sort you. Don't worry. Stand here and be thanking God. Eh, you guys. UAL130T. Go and help your car. The lights are on, they go off, then the doors open, then they close themselves. <laughs> UAL. Zero what? One three zero T. <laughs> Go and help your car. Your car has is misbehaving. Right now, I speak healing. I command that pain loose, loose, loose. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you still feeling pain? It's gone. Praise God. Go and register. What where is your pain? Okay. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? Where is it painting? Oh, okay. All right. Right now, okay. So many years. All right. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing to that wound. Right now, I speak healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I want you to follow him up for only one week. Eh? One week. Just one week and see. Just take his number. We want to follow you up for only one week. Praise God. Where's your pain? Your stomach. Alright, just put your, your hand on her stomach. It's okay. You spirit of infirmity and disease. Lose her now. In the name of Jesus. Lose her now. 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 Now. Whatever you ate, in the name of Jesus, I command it out. I command it out. She ate something. She ate something. It's coming out now. It's coming out now. 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 Are you still feeling pain? Check your stomach. Are you still feeling pain? She can't even. <laughs> Where's your pain? All right. I speak healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I speak healing. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Healing. Healing. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. You spirit of infirmity, I command you to lose now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes. Your wrist is broken. Broken. What happened? Ouch. Somebody stretch your hand toward this wrist. We want it to work now. God is healing these bones now. Now. We command a healing now in these bones. We release power in these bones. God, you can restore a broken bone now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to move it. Move it. Is there any pain? 
only here. The rest is okay. It's okay. It's also healing in just a few seconds. Just give it a few seconds. Check it. Praise God. You're healed. Yes? Those ones who can't, is it still there? Now it's on the shoulder. Hey. <laughs> Somebody thank God. <laughs> Just reach your hands toward and thank God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 It's gone. It's gone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone. Praise God. She said yes. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. You know, when you go to doctors and you can't even find your sickness, that's even... How demonic can it be? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a woman, you're here, they took away your child, and you don't know where your child is, and you want your child. I want to pray with you. I'm serious. Don't fear, come. I know who I'm talking to. Don't be afraid to come. Whether you're in the overflow or you're here, if you want to see your child, come. They took all your child. You want to see your child. Come. I want to pray with you. I'm very, very serious. 100%. It's not Prosy. Don't worry. Prosy is not yet married. <laughs> Praise God. There is somebody. I'm going to repeat one more time before I start preaching. There's a lady over here. They took away your child. And you don't know where your child is. And you want to see your child. I wonder if she has to also go in the overflow and check. I know who I'm looking for. Come. Don't fear. Come. I want to pray with you. I don't know who, but there's a lady. They took away your child. And you want to see your child again. Come. I'm very serious. Come. That person is around. That person is around. And don't resist God. Come. 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 You want to say something? Okay. While we're waiting, do you see anything new here today? Oh my goodness. Have you ever seen something new? I want to ask Bruce to come. I just want quickly, Bruce, wherever you are, if you just can come. Do you see something new? Let me tell you, this whole sound system, the lighting, is brand new. I want, I want Bruce to come. Now, as a businessman, what's more important to me is that it's fully paid. So we want to thank God and give glory to God. Come on. Come on. Let's just lift up our hands. Just lift up our hands. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you all to stretch out your hand towards any of the speakers up there. The speakers up there, they're all tied down. There are lights here. Everything that you see here. You know, you know why? Because we've been test running for the last three weeks. Eh? You think it is the same one? No. This is a brand new set. Owned by Fanero. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands. And you know, the man behind the sound is this young man here. And... 
There's a whole group behind, I know. There's a whole group. Moses, everybody there. The sound, can you just stand? Can you just stand? The sound people, just stand. You know, we don't acknowledge you. We always complain. Come on, stand, guys. Stand, stand, stand. The production team. There you go. Wow. I want to give God the glory and I'm going to ask Bruce to pray. You never hear him. That's right. There you go. That's right. Hallelujah. Can you stretch your hand towards the light, towards this whole thing? Let's pray. Just stretch your hands to the speakers of the man of God has told us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord, for this gift, my God. Father, we know this is just the beginning, Lord. We don't take it for granted, my Jesus. We are grateful, Lord. For many have desired to see this, but Lord, you have allowed us to see this in our days, Lord. Father, we know you're taking us farther, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, we can believe. Amen. You even used my mic. He's not going to sleep. I was supposed to thank later, but since, thank you for that proactive move. You have saved time. Hallelujah. We thank God, by the way. We don't take it for granted. She's the lady, right? Let's pray for this woman. Father, we thank you. For that child is coming back. Her child is coming back. Her child is coming back. Her child is coming back. Thank you, Lord. Your child is going to come back. Your child is going to come back. It's done. It's done. It's done. God reveals to redeem it. Dan, your child is going to come back. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the offering. Tell your neighbor we give big here. Mugambe, she turn to the and we give big here. We give big. Praise God. You're seated next to the richest people <laughs> in the world. You should be lucky. Say a contact. Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for the giving of your people. Multiply them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalm 105, the 17th verse. Something is going to happen today. It's going to happen today. You will wish you said amen. <laughs> Trust me, something is going to happen today. Psalms 107, verses 17 to 22. Let's read. The Bible says, He sent a man before them. Somebody say, He sent a man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. The next verse. Whose feet they had with fetters, and he was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, hallelujah, the word of the Lord tried him. Somebody said the word of the Lord tried him. Next verse. The king sent and loosed him, even the rule of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house, and ruler of all his substance. To bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. What a wonderful way to be released. You're not free to go and start a new life. No. You're free to take over. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying? He, he was not free to go and start a new life. You know, we've been to Chigo. You know, we're working on Chigo. Huh? We're, we're working with a team of people. Sarah is here. Stand up and I see you. She's among those people that we're working with to reach out. Praise God. So when you see her, no. You know? So we, we, we've been to places where you find a man arrested for 30 years or 40 years or 50 years. And after 50 years of arrest, they're released to start life. 
and they can't start from anywhere. You understand? But look at a situation where a man is released and the Bible says he, he was made Lord in the house of the king and ruled the substance of the king to bind the princes of the king at his pleasure. At his pleasure. And the Bible says, and to teach his senators, the king's senators wisdom. That's how he was released. He wasn't released to go and start a new family. He was released into glory. Hallelujah. That's why I'm excited about what's going to happen today. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me start this way. The Bible says, many of you know the scriptures. The wisdom of a prudent man is to know the way of God. The reason why it's important to know the way of God is because you can explain his ways. You understand? That's the essence of knowing his way. His way makes you explain his ways. If you only understand him from the way's perspective, it's possible not to understand his way of doing things. You cannot interpret God by his ways. No, 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 no. You can interpret him by his way. Hallelujah. And then his way starts to reveal ways. Somebody say amen. And there are two kinds of people here. I'll give you an example in the scriptures. The Bible says there was a time where the place of the Holy of Holies was not revealed. And and that's why people don't understand this. Even though there is a physical representation of the Holy of Holies, there is a, a revelation of being in the holiest place in God. It's a revelation. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says in Hebrews, the Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. It wasn't yet revealed. It wasn't yet revealed. Hallelujah. Or probably begin from the verses before. Verses 6, I think. Yeah. It says, Now when these things were thus ordained, the king, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. And the Bible says, And into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, this signifying that the way into the holiest of, 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 of holiest, the, the holiest of all, sorry, was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was standing. In other words, when the first tabernacle was standing, the place to the holiest of all was not revealed. It was not yet manifest. It had to be manifested. It had to be revealed. The holiest place in God is a revelation. It's a manifestation. Hallelujah. It's an existence that is not straightforward and open for every naked eye to see. Otherwise, all Christians would see God. All Christians would hear God. All Christians would experience God equally. But to many, it is not yet revealed. Somebody say, hallelujah. It's revealed in my spirit. I know why you're saying it. Don't worry. It begins from faith, but it will come. Next verse. And the Bible says, which was a figure of the time then present, okay, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them, the Bible says, until the time of reformation. Somebody say amen. There was an imposition of men which were burning blood and all these kinds of things and the Bible says it was it stood in meats, uh-huh, drinks, and what else? Diverse washings, carnal what? Ordinances, which were what? Imposed on them, the Bible says, until the time of reformation. Hallelujah. So when the time of reformation came, everything changed. In this instance, what is reformation? Ah, I don't know where to begin from. Let me begin this way. God is a God of seasons and times. You understand what I mean? He functions in seasons and times. You can understand your season, but if you don't know your time, you can never get results in your season. Are we together? 
is the problem with the man who spent 38 years at the, the pool of Bethsaida. The season of the angel stirring water is known. But every time the Bible says he wants to get in, another man gets in the ring. Why? Because when the season came, one man calculated time quicker than this fellow. Many are at that pool, spiritually, because certain men know how to take occasion and opportunity of time. Hallelujah. The greatest asset in this world is time. It's not resources, it's not, it's not, it's time. Having the opportunity to seize time. Hallelujah. Now the scriptures have taught us that there is a past. There's a, there's a probability of redeeming time. It's possible to redeem. So when the Bible says that redeeming the time for the days are evil, it means it's possible to redeem time. It's possible to do something in one year which, which could have taken you ten years. It's very possible. And it's possible to do ten years of something you could have done in one year. Are you seeing how important today is? Are you seeing how important today is? The difference between the most blessed and advantaged men on the face of the earth is how time worked in their favor. In other words, they earned quicker what takes. Because if, if probably our nation spends about $24 billion a year and Bill Gates has about $79 billion, it means what we have done as a nation... Is three times less than what a man redeemed. One man. One man. And the Bible says God starts to push certain things. You look at nations like Uganda, for God and our country. We all say, wow, it's a Christian nation. And then you look at the success of the Muslim nations in the world. And you remember the scriptures. He says that I will make, and he says, that I will cause foolish nations to annoy you, to anger you. <laughs> you understand? I'll, I'll cause foolish nations to make you annoyed. You understand? Yeah, it's Romans. It says, but I say this, but I say, do not Israel, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are not our people. And by a foolish nation I will anger you. As in, You'll see, men will be blessed until you become angry. Now your anger is a blessing on a man. It happened. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this happened. Where men were provoked to jealousy by them that are not a people. The children of Israel spent 38 years around Mount Seir. Of the 40, 40 years they spent in the wilderness. There was a shortcut of the 12 day journey, the scriptures say. And the Lord took not them at the way of the Philistine, though it was shorter. For he saw that they, seeing war, might fear and return back to Egypt. D do you realize when they were on the water, they didn't know how to cross? But there was a fear that would engulf them and make them cross. Fear can make you do things. I said, fear can make you do things. One time I ran faster than a dog. Don't argue, it happened. You might not believe it. You might not believe it. The thing was here many years ago. And he said to me, oh, oh, oh. I said, Mega Grace. <laughs> Up to today, I'm still asking myself, did it have pity on me? Was I faster? <laughs> but I remember I was faster. At least that's what I know. If it had pity on me, mm -hmm. me, I ran faster than it. Hallelujah. <laughs> He says, they behold in war. But adventure, these people repent when they see war. And they return to Egypt. He didn't say they run back. No, they return. <laughs> they can return. Fear can make a man return. Fear can make a man do something you never expected them to do. Because they couldn't do it when they were at peace. Are you hearing me? Praise God. But they spent 38 years around one mountain there. And guess what? They didn't get tired of status quo. The Bible says it's God who got tired. He said you've been around this mountain for so long. God got bored. You understand? This was God. He got bored with them. It's not, it's not them who got tired. No. 
they were willing to stay there. But you know that Sarah was an inheritance of the Edomites. Hallelujah. The man which, whose birthright was robbed. Esau. That's what Sarah was. Esau inherited Sarah. But how the children of God return from bondage after years. And they don't even know what's beautiful anymore. They get into the camp of the Edomites. And they don't want to leave. Because they feel it's a blessing to be there. But you don't blame them. They produce children and children's children in captivity. They didn't know what to be a nation would be like. They could not even imagine being... They didn't understand the blessing anymore. Even if miracles happened before them, those miracles could not make sense. Why? Because under the earth they spent in Egypt, what Pharaoh did, what the devil did in those men, he killed their identity. That when they are in Sarah, they no longer know that we are descendants of another man which took the blessing of the men which are giving us refuge. Do you understand how serious it is? Do you know how serious it is for somebody to forget who they are in God? And then they tomorrow do something and you're like, wow, she doesn't know who she is. If she knew who she was, she wouldn't do this. If he knew who he was in God, he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do this. Hallelujah. They spent years and years and years in bondage. When they came out, they didn't know how to be a people. They didn't know how to be a nation. They didn't know how to relate with God anymore. Even when Moses leaves them for days, they turn to calves. And then build funny altars. Why? Because their sense of God had died. But they were still Israelite in blood. And they were still God's choicest people. Are you with me? Do you understand? Now, what puts a man 38 years around one mountain and he doesn't think to move? You see, when we define reformation, many people don't understand the price of reformation. Reformation is a situation where men go off the truth and the right line of things without the knowledge that they are off. And then, and God raises another who still sees the angles right and comes to tell them you've gone off. But you see, the challenge here is you're dealing with people who don't know they are off. Do you understand? And the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make, make, make you free. Make you free. Make you free. Make you free. It will make you free. And the Bible says, and they asked him. These are them. And they answered him. We be Abraham's seed. That means we have faith. And we're never in bondage to any man. How says thou you shall be made free? What do you mean we are bound? They don't know they are. Let me tell you. When a man knows, it's different from when a man doesn't know. Because when they're delivered, they won't know they're delivered. You understand? And if they don't know that they are delivered, there is a big chance they will assume they are still bound. Are you hearing me? And then, men who are like them come in their company and then try to release them which think they are bound. Okay, let me, let me say it again. The man is free. You understand? But they don't know that they are free. And because of that, they go up the line of truth and go to bondage. They are not bound because of demons. They are bound because their consciences are not aligned. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, how be we know that in this world there is only one God. And that idols are nothing in this world. And he says, but how be this knowledge is not in all men. It's not in all men. And some with a conscience, the Bible says, to the idol. 
eat this day as unto the idol. And their conscience being defiled, not the devil being stronger. Their conscience being defiled, it's being weak is defiled. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Go, see, how beat? In a, okay, give it to me in the Amplified. <laughs> Nevertheless, not all believers read that. Oh, begin from verse 5, verse 5 or 6. I'm just going to give you an example. For although there may be so-called gods, Rubari, Musisi, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many of them, both gods of lords and masters, he says, yet for us, for us, for us, for us, there is only what? One God. The Father, who is the source of all things, and for whom we have life. Right? And one Lord Jesus Christ, through and by whom all things and through by whom we ourselves exist. We are through Christ, by Christ existing. And the next verse says, Nevertheless, not all believers possess this knowledge. But some, through being all their lives until now, accustomed, I think, to thinking of idols as real and living, still consider the food offered to an idol as sacrifice to an actual God and their weak conscience becomes defiled and injured if they eat. So the problem here is not even the devil. The problem here is the man's weak conscience. Are you hearing me? The conscience. Because remember the end of the commandment is love out of a good pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith and faith. These three things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. These three things, and that's the process. When a man is perfected in the love of God, pure love, hallelujah, the end of the commandment, you understand, is grace. When a man enters grace, the first thing he understands is pure love, pure love. Nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. You're persuaded that neither things present nor things to come, neither principalities nor powers, no angels. For you get persuaded, you understand? No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate from the love of God, which is in Christ. That love of God comes with a certain glory to it. You understand? What glory does it come with? Primarily, primarily, perfect love cast us out of fear. So it's not actually the ministry of a man to cast fear out of their spirit. It is the ministry of love to cast out fear. That means don't say I rebuke the spirit of fear. No. Embrace the spirit of love. Because when love comes to your spirit, love casts out all fear. You stop fearing. Why? Because God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. There is no parent who can't take a bullet for their child. Yet God loves us more. God loves us more. But he needs you to rely on that faith and love. Oh, when you understand this, you don't worry. You don't worry. Are you hearing me? Now, why? Because fear, amplify it, amplify that. Because fear, listen, there is no fear in love. Somebody say amen. amen. Dread does not what? Exist. But full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. For fear, listen, brings with it the thought of punishment. And what happens when a man thinks punishment? He's punished. The KJV says, fear hath torment. That means the moment you fear, you are a direct candidate of torment. It's not your generational caste. No. No, 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 no. You're direct, direct, direct. You understand? And the Bible says, and so he's afraid. He who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love. Is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Are you seeing that? So, the end of the commandment, number one, introduces the man to pure love. And then he casts out fear. And then what happens? The conscience becomes good. Because that's what is defiled. Are you seeing? That is the fear of Paul. You see that? The conscience becomes Good. He says, nevertheless, all these believers possess their, not, not all believers possess this knowledge, but some through being all their lives until now accustomed to thinking of idols as the real and living, still consider food over to an idol as that sacrifice to an actual God. And their weak, weak, weak consciences become defiled 
and injured when they eat. And when the conscience is defiled, every kind of attack comes to you. And then you come for prayers. Apostle, pray for me. They bewitched me. <laughs> and I have to cast out the devil because you brought it in yourself. You see what I'm saying? I bought a plot of land. But when I was buying it, the people, years ago, I said this story years ago. I bought a plot of land and when I was buying it, the people who sold it to me, they said, you are a young man. We don't want you to die. I said, why? They say, you see, this plot of land was owned by a witch, a, a witch and she, she had two shrines here. Huh? And then they told me that when she left, they, they bounced her. They, they told her, leave. Because she was possessing land without permission. And then she said, she went on the land and then said, no man will ever buy this land. Are you hearing me? You understand? And then, <laughs> Apostle Grace likes the land. I took Bishop there. I said, oh, Bishop, huh? He's actually the one who cited it. So we go into negotiations. And then one body tells me, you see, when that woman spoke that thing years ago, I think it was many years ago, I think since over 2008, she said, everyone who reaches on this land either gets an accident or they die or they get problems. Quick, and by we have a list. <laughs> so the woman asks me, aren't you afraid to join that list? <laughs> Do you understand me? She told me, aren't you afraid to join that list? Now I realized when I say no, she'll just think I'm just brave. You see, I, I would need too much explanation to tell her why. I just laughed. And even the guys around the border, border guys, they said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. when you buy that land, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Eh, eh, eh. Somebody came the other day, the moment they were almost paying, they got an accident. Then another one, Simanya, then another one, he got problems. Somebody, Simanya, the last guy who came, he lost all the money. You understand? When I got the story, I bargained for a cheaper price. <laughs> and you said it is risky. <laughs> Man, you have to learn to be smart. <laughs> I said, now put it a bit low, because now I'm going to leave it. Ah, yeah. Then some old woman said, you guys will have struggled with this thing for so long. Give it to the young man. He's the one who knows. <laughs> I paid for my land, got the title. After that, the woman came. Now there was a neighbor woman who is also born again, who was also timid. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other woman comes, the, the, the witch, the witch. She comes back on the land. And then she says, Whoever has bought this land, Ask Bishop, he'll tell you. True story. He's never going to put anything on it. Are you hearing that kind of statement? So the next time I drive there, of course we'd put bricks and what? The, <laughs> just to test the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> I reached there. And, and Bishop told me, Aya, the woman your neighbor is shaking. Why? She said, Mama, Mama, Mama. Now he was narrating her, the way she was saying it. That the other woman came and said, They will never build here. Then even me, I, I stood in my corner and sent a spiritual order. <laughs> I said from today, That woman is never going to have the ability to walk again to that land. After two weeks, Bishop called me. The woman is looking for you to release her. What did you do to her? <laughs> Her legs are tied up to now. <laughs> Ma Kalaba, you can't be with a born again Christian. She just played with the wrong person. You understand? 
When they say you're going to die on Monday, you tell them Saturday evening. <laughs> don't joke with a child of God. Listen, don't joke with a child of the Most High God. Up to now, she's still. Another guy used to give us problems in Mukono. You knew the guy. You remember? Sunday service, you put music. Boa, 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 boa. Then he also puts boa, boa. He was a witch doctor. And I thank God you guys saw. Does he play? Has he played it after that? <laughs> he used to, you know, like you're having service. And then he gets speakers and then he puts them in the middle. Wah! Boo, 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 boo. You understand? And then he increases the volume. So one time we are, we are praying and the guy pulls a mean move and then I was going to preach and I said, God, how can I preach in this noise? I was scared. The guy was doing it over and over. I said, God, how can I preach in this noise? He's a witch doctor. Everybody knows it. Our warlock. Over. So forgive my English. Murogo. So, I told God, there was no way I was going to allow this guy to interrupt my teaching. So I remember I walked out. Who did I go with? Was it you or Apostle Emma? It was you. What happened? Now you come, testify. <laughs> Don't fear the crowd. You just went and looked at it and then it stopped. So I went and looked at the, the machines. Immediately they, they died. He was humble. He said the word stop. Immediately they, then after a few minutes, we received reports the guy was running mad. Inside there. The devil. You understand? He ran mad. So one time, he said, now I want to sell this place. He called Bishop. Bishop said, yeah, we are, huh, we are coming, but I'm also going to come with a position. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to come with a I can't sit with that guy. Listen, which doctors will call you a witch? <laughs> the Bible says he rebuked kings for their sake. Kings, he told them, don't touch Masasi. Don't touch Nixon. Touch anything else, but don't touch that one. He said he rebuked kings for their sake. He rebuked. He said he allowed no man, no man, to do them wrong. In fact, he reproved kings for their sakes. He told them, touch, not put your name. Put your name. Hey! Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. Oh, I know who I am. Oh, I know who I am. Oh, oh, I know who I am. 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 The day you ever get in a place where everyone does witchcraft except you, in a, when, in a business place, my goodness, thank God. But some of you start preaching anointing oil. No, no, no. Thank God. Why? Because he can't thrive in your presence. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. Because this is light darkness. This is God's power versus darkness. What do you expect? It shines in darkness, and darkness what? Do you realize that's past tense? That's not present continuous. That means there was one attempt darkness tried to comprehend light. And then he failed. That was the last time he ever tried. There is no day you'll ever switch on light. And light, ref- and light goes on and darkness holds it. It will never happen. He comprehended. It was a finished work there. Now, somebody don't understand this. When he descended in hell, that's exactly what happened. That's what happened when he descended in hell. 
light. You understand? He descended. Darkness tried. He could not. Why? Because when he went under in hell, he, he, it was war. Public spectacle triumphing over all of them. Darkness tried to hold Jesus, but he couldn't. From that day, it registered in the devil's head that you can't com- uh, comprehend light. You can't seize light. You can't hold light. You can't hold it. You can't repress it. Even the devil knows he can't beat you. He knows it. <laughs> oh Lord, my Savior. So, the end of this commandment brings a purity of love and then your conscience is cleared. When your conscience is cleared, the Bible says, now you enter into a place of faith and faith. And that every time you believe something, it's true. When you hear God say something, you've heard. When you see something, you've seen. When you, everything starts to work the right way. Why? Because you are at the end of it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, let's go back to Hebrews. I want to explain that in context. He spoke of the time of reformation. He says, this stood in meat and drinks. No, no, begin from before. About eight. It says the Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure of the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that, listen, could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Because reformation begins when a conscience is aligned to truth. When a conscience is not aligned to truth, there cannot be reformation. Are you hearing me? Now, a man's conscience is already compromised. When he he meets a reformer's spirit, they will fight. They are not fighting because the reformer is wrong. No. But they are fighting because the man's conscience is not perfected in God. Now, it says until the time of reformation. When the time of reformation came, what happens? They start to get the revelation... That all these diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on you, meats and drinks, all of this stuff can be finished by one guy called Jesus. There are men who had built their lives around those ordinances. There, when the Bible calls them carnal ordinances, there are men who had even made those ordinances. They are the ones who started them and said, don't do this. Right? Some of them had built ministry around diverse washings. Others had established a testimony around meats. Others had built institutions around drinks. It's very serious. Now, when reformation, and that is why I tell people, read church history. There has never been a time of reformation and war wasn't. And actually, war begins firstly out the world as creation groans for the manifestation of the reformer. And then it starts to come inside the church. Everywhere there is reformation, there will be war. Why? Because you're putting men in line who don't know that they're out of line. Now, when you're dealing with a conscience that is with an innocent spirit, okay, that doesn't tell the difference, they're easy to deal with. Because everything you say, they're just learning. You understand? But when you're dealing with something out of line, the way ministry is done, the way things... My goodness, some of you will not understand this. Give us two years. Two, you'll understand what we meant. The other day we started Fanero. The first day of the meeting, I sat 1,200 people. A man of God said, Ah, that is not God. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Do you understand? What was his problem? You know, I said to the guy who told me, I told him, Look, those men have not yet seen nothing. They are guys who are going to start way deeper. Way, way bigger. If, 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 if Fanero is a threat, then watch and see. Watch and see. Watch and see. For you think every business, you have to start ritual by ritual. You know there are people who love those stories. <laughs> ritual by ritual. You understand? If he met Joseph after prison, you tell him, Joseph, come on, tell him something. You see... Life is not easy. Um, I know you have been released and you have nowhere to start. Or you might be released, but you might not have anywhere to start. Then Joseph starts the counseling of how men start. And then they write stories. Life. 
after prison. Then the story begins like this. I remember I had 3,000 shillings in my pocket. I went and read, I, I slept on the streets for five days. Went and slept in church for 15 days. And then after that, I went to another man's shelter for 20 years. Then after that, money I got, I met someone who helped me. And after 30 years of struggling, God came out. Brethren, God appeared. You might be there and you have spent 20 years under this situation. God is going to quicken somebody here today. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I might even speaking, be speaking to two people or three or so. But there is somebody here. Something is going to happen in your life. And they are going to say, this one was not in prison. They were lying. This one was not working in a bank. That's a lie. This one was not selling fish. No, it can't be. And it's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. A man of God met me somewhere. He saw funeral pictures. He said, where have you been? I wanted to tell him. You understand? Some people think we just appeared out of the air. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about the anointing in this ministry. We surprise. We surprise. When you think you know us, we prove to you that you don't know us. That's the truth. Even if you don't believe it, me, I believe it. When, tell your neighbor, when you think you know me, that's the day I will surprise you. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. You see, it's important that you look the way you are. Many of you says that one day the, the, the videos can show. She used to put on red. He used to put on a suit. Do you remember? He had an afro. Maraba Satalaba. It's important. Keep your testimony. Hold your old phone a little longer. When we come out, we come out big. Tell your neighbor, when we come out, we come out big. That's who we are. Tell your neighbor, that's who we are. So now, a man comes, diverse washings, meats, drinks, carnal ordinances, and God tells you, all of this is nonsense. Get one guy, Christ. Just get one guy. And the guy says, wait a minute. You mean he's all in all? Yeah. In him all things consist. Yes. 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 Say what? Are you hearing me? Now, many of them, because they have understood God a certain way. Oh, they think things must come a certain way. I wish I was permitted to share my story a bit deeper. You'd understand things... Listen, you don't need 20 years. You don't need 15 years. You don't need 16 years. You just need one moment with the right revelation. One! Let me say... No. Where is, is Calbert around? Is Calbert around? Aha. Uh-huh. Did, did the other guy come? The guy who came with to, to the to your office the other day, is he around or is not? He's out of the country. He's in Zambia. Calbert can testify. One time I stood here and I remember saying something and I said, There is somebody here. You've not been working, you've not have been having everything, you're broke, you're, you're everything was. But mark from today three months, the guy put it in his diary. He calculated three months from that date. Calbert is my witness. He was in the office when the guy was telling me. The guy got rich after the third month like this. He got rich in one day. Ask him. Is it true? One day. Come, come, come. They might. One day. You see, I say the word and the guy got it. One guy got it. 
He didn't get rich in two days. He didn't need 17 steps to know you will become rich. He didn't take step by step. Ah, Calvert, you come and tell them. What happened? You tell them. Yeah, he came here. Then he had just spent one month in Faneru. Then Apostle Grace said, there is someone, God is going to transform your life in a short time. After that, he got very, very big contracts that are worth 700, 900 million. And, and they come, they come, they are coming actually. Because every month, he does interior design, he can be having like four contracts like per month. Right now, as we speak, he has gone to meet the president of Zambia. He called him. So he's in Zambia right now to meet the president. He'll be coming back. Yeah. The other day he even called me and told me, after Zambia, I'm going to meet one of the richest guys in, in was it Qatar or Saudi Arabia? Qatar. I said, Banange. Some of you, you are literal by literal. <laughs> I said, your life is going to change in three months. I remember that day. <laughs> I remember that day. He told me he nodded and said three months. He said, This is this is easy to believe. Let me test this God. He said, three months from now, if I don't see your God, there'll be something wrong. There's another man who had that statement and just said, Yeah, amen. He went back. No. These words are spirit and their life. Listen, when I say something, I'm speaking because I had God. That's the truth. That's how we be. So this guy, contracts, multiple. So he started coming to me. Oh, Apostle. Now, that day he was in my office. His problem now is how to spend money. <laughs> I said, God, you're wonderful, oh. That's what we want. Say that our counseling sessions are different. You come and say, I have a million dollars. What should I do, Apostle? I'm really worried. <laughs> And yes, you will stay loving God. You will stay loving God. You will stay loving God. That's how I know that these moms, these are just temporal. What you're going through is just temporal. It's a light affliction. If God could cause a, a people, Israelites, to become jealous of people who are not a people and provoke them to anger, by blessing foolish men. You, your believers. You're a people. And you're not rebellious. Your obedience has come abroad upon all men. That is why I'd rather have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He was trying to teach Israelites something which you now know because you have the mind of Christ. You will not fail. Even if you say, you will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. Some of you, even your stories will be like stories. People will hear them and they will look like they are fiction. They will look like they are fiction. They will look like they are fiction. Fanero is not a fellowship. <laughs> Fanero is a model <laughs> of the church. <laughs> it's up to you what you believe. Me, that's what I know. Let me tell you, because you and me are alive, the world is about to hear the deepest preachers, the most anointed prophets, the richest businessmen, the deepest ushers, the most sanctified and anointed worshippers in the world. And they are coming from Uganda. That is why I don't want to leave this land. We want to start from here. And those American boys here, it began from Uganda. Yes, down central Kampala. And it's happening. Because the reality of he is <laughs> what he thinks, not he will be. Present continuous. The atmosphere is released for you and I. Banange, we are blessed. We are blessed people. You will not listen. 
producing stale kids and lame children, those are not your stories. If you did once, it's ended on that one. Barrenness, having miscarriages, no way. It's not our story. Our children, our children will love God. They will look at us and say, I love your God. We won't push them to accept Jesus. No, they will plead to receive Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. He said, and your children I will teach. And their peace shall be many. You won't be there worried about my child is going to take drugs or that she might get a wrong guy. You won't. She's taught of God. She's taught of God. Now you see, now we are shaping your children. We are sorting your... You should love us. We are sorting your grandchildren. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if a man gets multi-contracts in one day, it's not a mistake. Don't take it light. Don't take it light. Don't take it light. I told him that's why God blessed you. That you would teach men to believe on God. Just teach them to believe on God. Live a life that teaches men that they look at you and they want to know your God and you tell them this is how my God works. This is how my God works. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let, let me be a bit seated for a second. Now, when I look at reformation, reformation becomes a deeper subject. When you're dealing with a man who doesn't even understand whether he ought to be reformed or not, because he doesn't know the difference between reformation and the diversion from the truth, because what, he call, what you call diversion is actually truth to him. It's what he has known to be true. We were lied to for so long that now when truth comes on the pulpit, it looks like a lie. Because we were lied for too long, they lied to us. Are you hearing me? He said, none in Zion shall say I'm sick. Why? Because their sins are forgiven. The forgiveness of sins does not give you divine healing. It gives you divine health. But you are lied to that it gives you divine healing. So you anticipate sickness. Let me tell you. There are many people to treat in the world. You understand? Who need drugs? You're not a monk. You're not a monk. Oh, I, 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 I am on. You do drugs. I am on, I am on, I am on, I am on this fin. Why that fin? What a fin? What a fin? No. No. You're going to be 90. No diabetes. No high blood pressure. No nothing. Healthy. You come to overnight like this and you're 90 years old. Can I show you a scripture? I was talking to God about our future. <laughs> Let me tell you. That's why I tell Christians. Everyone. Serve God. Serve God. Let me show you something in Exodus 25. <laughs> I want to show you something in Exodus 25. Call him. 23, sorry. <laughs> Exodus 23. Begin from verses 25. Read. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. Somebody say, I will serve the Lord my God. When he does, look at, I want to show you a process. The Bible says, he will bless your bread and your water that means the revelation that comes out of your spirit and the demonstration will be blessed you know you won't just demonstrate power you see there are men who function by gifts you understand but the gifts working out of their lives don't come with a certain blessing he said i will bless your bread meaning when i'm preaching my message will come with the power I mean, a man will get out and say, I'm blessed I had Apostle Grace. I am blessed. Not just because of the word I... You see, it, it will come with a blessing to it. I don't know if you understand. When you go to work and you sit in that administrative chair, whatever you're doing, every man has merit, yes. But for you on top of merit, you have blessing. 
That means when they think of promoting, before they promote, they'll say, oh, both have merit. But this one has something on them. It's a bit different. It's a bit extra. It's different. Let me tell you, the smartest men don't pass interviews. No. Men who know who they are. I remember when I was doing the interview of DTV. The man gave me a very crazy figure. He told me, can you get us this much billions, Aya? I told him, that's very small. Come on, you're insulting me. He said, let's hire this guy. (laughs) (laughs) And I kept my end year record. I beat his target. I have it in my paper. such that when my children ask me, I kept... Are you hearing me? You understand? They should know they are getting a blessing to employ you. But some of you, you you're reading, you know, I can try. <laughs> you never know. Let's hope. <laughs> oh! And the Bible says, and Abraham against hope believed. Against hope. Where there was no reason for him to believe. The Bible says against hope. You see, even where there is no hope, for you are just hoping. This man believed where there was no hope. He says against hope, believe. Bringing glory to God. He brought glory to God. You know when you start from a faith perspective, God smiles and says, yeah, that's my boy. That's it, preach. You're doing the right thing. He says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Now, some of you, when you read that scripture, you, don't even, you may never understand it. Abraham believed to be a father of nations. He believed. You see, he told him, go, I'll show you a place, right? He led him to Canaan. Now, the Hebrew word for Canaan is lowly land. So, Canaan cannot be a promised land. A promised land can't be lowly. Are you hearing me? He led him to the place in Canaan. And when he led him there, and the separation from him with Lot had, had taken place, God told him, and the Lord stayed with Abraham. And he told him, now, look north, look south, look east, look west. For as far as your eyes can see, all the land which thou seest to thee, I will give unto thy seed. Next verse. No, some people think he ended there. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise. You see, you see, you see. Some people end on seeing. That's why they don't see results. No, don't end on seeing. Arise and walk. <laughs> Let me explain how you walk there. You imagine when you're there. You see, many people end on that. They say, as far as you can see, you shall possess. Then they see and see until they die. Because they don't take time to walk. (laughs) Don't end on seeing. Tell your neighbor, don't just see. Walk there every day. Walk there every day. Even when you're in marriage. Are you hearing me? Oh, yele bakayala. Listen. If you have your husband and he's struggling financially and you're a woman, if he can't walk there, walk him there. When he's walking out, scream and say, Oh my God, the best businessman is going to work today. Look at him, look at him, look at him. He's going out, he's walking, he's walking, he's sitting in a car, he's sitting in a car. My goodness, go there, go there. Don't just see, walk there. Oh boy. I wish I can tell you. I wish I can tell you. I wish I can tell you. Our first funerals, they were spiritual. You are alone in your room. You get your Bible and start talking like you're talking to a thousand people. Nanga, there is only the room, the chair. My goodness, the beds can testify. Those walls can testify. That cold cement can testify. We walked there. That's why the Bible says, walk about Zion. Walk. Don't just see. 
walk. Walk about Zion. The Bible says, look at the citadels. Consider her bulwarks. The Bible says, look through. He says, for when you do that, you shall have a message. You shall have what to tell. Read, read it. Give me the amplified. Uh, do, you, do you have the NLT? New Living Translation? Uh, New Living Translation. NLT. Uh, read. <laughs> Walk around and count the many towers. Take note of the fortified walls and tour all the citadels that you may describe them to the future. In other words, the moment you see, God gives you the power to describe. Let me tell you, a man who preaches in description is different from a man who is preaching in a gift. A person who is worshipping in description is different from a worshipper who is singing because of a good voice. A businessman who is doing business in description is different from a businessman who is just working. I do it in description. I do it like I saw. That's what he told the man. Make sure to build the tabernacle like the pattern you saw, which is in heaven. He showed the man. He walked there, considered everything. That's the problem. Many believers see they don't walk. Walk there. Walk there. How do you walk there? Meditate yourself there. Don't put it as a future experience. Put it as a now experience. Start to act like you eat. You will start thanking God for it. Before it even manifests. The communication of your faith. Becoming effectual. By acknowledging of every good thing. Which is in you. Not which shall be in you. Which is in you. Not which will come tomorrow. Not which will come next week. No. Which is in you. Which is in Christ. I used to tell myself and I still do. I'm the deepest man on earth. Even you, you can add... The world is still big enough for us to be deepest. That's what I tell myself. If there's a deeper one, I don't know them. Me, I am the deepest. I tell myself so. So I say, "Mm -hmm." you see, that's your problem. That's why you're listening to me. Where is our boasting? Yeah. When you get faith, you learn to know. That you're not just a fake thing there. You're God, I'm nothing. I'm, I'm a rag. You're not a rag. You're something, woman. Brother, you're something. You're something. When I look at you, I say, ay, 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 ay. Walk like something. Think like something. Act like something. Respond to the world like something. Oh, I'm something. Boy, I'm something. Walk there. Walk there. Walk there. I wish, you, I wish some of you know my prayer time. <laughs> oh, my prayer time is seeing and walking. Seeing and walking. Seeing and walking. Seeing and walking. That's my prayer time. Seeing and walking. Seeing and walking. That's my prayer time. You understand? I see it. I say, ah, oh, excitement comes in my soul. And next thing I find myself, why? Because I'm walking there. I'm building myself in my most holy faith. Speaking in tongues. And the next thing I know, it manifests. That's what I know. That's what I know. You might first appear to be proud. Until they realize it's actually the highest sense of humility. To do it God's way. To refuse to do it your way. Some of you are too proud. You want to do it your way. Oh God to do it your way. No. Do it God's way. That's called humility. Somebody say amen. So. Listen. He takes him to Canaan. He tells him. From there look. And walk. That means the promised land is not. The promised land is to see and walk. That's what the Bible calls promise. That's why they wait, where they wait for cows and bees. <laughs> because they were told it flows with milk and honey. They wait for the cows, they don't see the bees, they say, ah, no, this ain't it. They go to another place. Ah. In the worst places, God starts to speak. God is so good with pressure. When you feel like your home is on pressure, your situation, that's where God wants to speak to you from. 
it has just to tell you look. Let me tell you. It's too hard to look when to look yourself driving when, when your your landlord is do 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 give me the money. Do 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 give me the money. But that's where God wants you to look. <laughs> look from there. Lowly place. The place when you are at your lowest. Understand God is about to do something. That is why when Paul saw it, he says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. He knows the strength of a Christian is at their weakest point. That's why I like men who are weak. Because I know something is about to happen. And when it blows, I want to be their friend. I want to say, I'm here as your friend. Wama was entire there. <laughs> so I realized he tells him go to a place I will show you but the place was to see and walk that was the place when Canaan never changed read the scriptures Canaan never changed but Abraham did he works great until he was great in a few chapters later God says you saw the right thing from today you are not Abraham. Now you are the father of all nations. Why? Because when he told him to walk, Abraham went past Canaan. <laughs> when he told him to walk, Abraham went past Canaan. Because God doesn't limit your walk. And he doesn't limit your vision. Are you hearing me? The, the, the lowly place is not the farthest of it he has given you. Walk further. The man walked further. He became. That's why the Bible says, go back to the scripture. He, against hope, he believed. Give me that scripture again. He says, who against hope, believed in hope, comma, that he might become of many nations. Against hope, the Bible says, he believed that he might become. That means there was a deliberate effort for this man to see himself further in the whole world. Deliberate. For you are saying, God, if you give me only three million, three, three millions, my life will change. Don't ask for small things. Ask for something that when you ask for it, somebody will run away and say, no, this man is mad. Have you heard what he's talking about? Ask say something that will make even your wife lose appetite. And some say, that's big small. Spot putting canteens and small little restaurants and little pharmacies. Come on, child of God. Walk. Walk. For I would write something down. I would write something so crazy now. Just get a pen and write something so crazy now. Write something so crazy that when, when you go back and show it to your child, she will say, Mama, what's wrong with you? I want you to see and walk. Don't worry. We are almost finishing. It is important. Write. You know the Lord spoke to me today and told me somebody, somebody. Me, I don't know who. But me, there is somebody I'm talking to. And you understand it. You understand. Have you written? Write something a bit crazier. Way crazier. Way crazier. Say this is me. Write it. Say this is me. This is me. I remember the other day I was looking at things I wrote and I said, Oh God. If I showed it to some people, they would not believe I wrote these things long ago. But you see, there was no faith. There was no prophet. No. The word was sure. The word was sure. And then we started to walk. And we're still walking. We've not yet. We've not, when I tell people we've not yet started, it is because in the walk, the Bible says, write a vision down that he may run that readeth it. The reader runs with it and runs away. Because it's too much. Don't write something small. Do you really think in this atmosphere you can go back? Oh, the Bible says the people without a vision cast restraint. Why? Because without vision, either way you will cast. The only difference is that you will give an indifferent light. And therefore men will know you by a falsehood. I don't know if they are making sense. That's 
It's enough. Allow me to finish. God is moving. In Exodus, he said, 23, 25, he said, You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless thy water, thy bread and water. That means every word that comes out of you, even if you're not a preacher, it will come with a certain glory. It will come with a certain power. When you tell people next week I'm making it, they get ready because they know that when that woman speaks something, as surely as the day is when that man says something, it must come to pass. He says, I'll bless your bread and your water. Water means the spirit. That means even the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. They won't only come with a gift. They'll come with a blessing. You understand? Do you remember the scripture that speaks of how God anoints our seed? Do you know that Luke 8.11 says that the seed is the word? Now, when you see people and the power of God is coming upon them and I'm preaching. You understand? He says, I will pour a word upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground and I will pour my spirit upon your seed. Luke 8.11 says that the seed is the word. Meaning that when I preach, God pours his spirit on my message. You see, God pours his spirit on my message. It just doesn't come alone. It comes with the power. It comes with the power. You understand? Now, you might not be a preacher, but when you wake up and sit in your business and say, you're a success, ah, he pours water on it. And he say, let that word grow. Let that word grow. Whatever the Lord has called you to be, in your workplace, wherever you are, something is poured on his water. Are you hearing me? Now, let's go back and finish. He says, he will bless your water and your what? Your, your bread. And I will take, this is for men. You must, that's why you must serve God. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. That means that, firstly, you're not supposed to be sick because you're a servant of God. Hey? The next verse even makes it better. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. Do you understand? In your land, nothing will cast its young. It won't lose its young. Nothing will use, lose its young. I don't know what young, or baby, or business, or whatever it is, is your young. He says, none will cast they are young. You understand? No be barren. That means everyone will produce fruit in thy land. The number of your days I will fulfill. That means you're not going to die. Even if your whole family has hypertension. Smanya, your auntie died of cancer. It will end on them. Why are you a servant of God? Sometime back I was asking God something. And then he came and he spoke in a very strong voice. And I will never forget the day. I even wrote it. It was the 24th. The Holy Spirit told me, Rebecca Grace, open to Proverbs, I mean Psalm 61, 6. And I opened there. And when I opened there, and before I opened, he told me the, the scripture. I had never read it. Brethren, if I tell you these things, you might not understand. He told me in Psalm 61, 6, he quoted the scripture. When I opened it, it was so. I had never read that scripture. I knew God was speaking. He says, thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He told me, you, you got your kings, you should never worry about life. Never worry about life. God will prolong your life. I was asking him a question about some things. Something. It, it took me there. An amazing thing is, I didn't know the chapter and the verse, and I didn't know the wording. Now, when the Spirit says something, and tells you the chapter and the verse, and you open and it is there, how much more do you want him to speak? I would be mad if I died tomorrow. My own would be mad if they died. Because I was praying for certain people. You understand? Certain people. I was praying for us as a ministry. And then God showed me something. And that something needed that scripture to sort. And it was sorted. 
I'm sorry, it's personal. I can't share it. But you see how wonderful God is. He preserves us even in that kind of experience. Now he says, with long, he will fulfill your life. But now, if you're planning to die next week, I'm sorry. Now somebody says, how do I live long? Serve God. Serve God. But what about those servants who die and then yet they serve God? They never saw that verse. You, you saw it. Yeah, people die because they lack knowledge. You, you have seen it. How can you die? How can you die? Hey, hallelujah. Now I want to finish this way. I want to finish this way. Let's go back to where I began from. This man was in bondage. And when he was released, give me the first verse where, where we're at. He made, he was immediately made Lord. You understand? Now, I wanted to finish this. In 17th verse, you know, God was talking to me something a few years ago. He told me, when the Bible says he sent a man before them. It means that even if we begin this way, you be ahead of those men. You might be the same age. <laughs> they might be older. <laughs> and God told me, see, that was in the Old Testament. But the New Testament believer can fix that. In fact, when I was in second year campus, I learned to move ahead of men. In knowledge and everything, I learned how to move ahead of men. I learned. If you allowed me, I would take another 30 minutes and explain scripturally. It's possible. Why? Because time is in our hands. Now, at least at any time, they should turn and hear and see and be converted and I shall heal them. Any time. Meaning that that time is based on your place of conversion, your hearing and seeing. Listen. The Bible says, he said, it's possible. Now, if you don't... If, now, this is reformation. It's possible to be ahead of men who are your peers. Like it is possible that you've seen men who are your age and they're ahead of you. Oh, you've seen men who are younger than you, but they're ahead of you. Are you hearing me? That's deliverance, don't worry. It's possible. You understand what I'm saying? It's possible to find a 14-year-old who is ahead of an 8-year-old. It's possible to find a 30-year-old who is ahead of a 50-year-old. You understand? It's also possible for you to go ahead of your peers. It's even possible to go ahead of those older than you. It's possible. It's possible. It's very possible. It's possible. It's possible. You see, when you enter the dispensation of eternal excellence when the bible says for i shall make the eternal excellences you understand you realize that eternity begins with time in the first dimension not the first dimension the life of a man begins with time from the first dimension what is the time it is 8 30. that's the life of a man you're taught time against men's time are you hearing me that's the beginning of your life who told you that uh, why are you saying it's nine why are you saying it's eight? Because it is. Who told you so? Because I set my clock there. Who set it? Because I copied it on the phone. Whose phone? So and so. And where did he get it from? It was a network setting. Who made the network know it's 8 p.m.? It was set by a computer. Who set the computer? So, do you realize that you're all functioning under one man's definition of time? One man woke up and said, now, eh? It's 8 p.m. And now is it? He put scientific explanation. You understand? Hypothetical phenomena became theory. And then you were adopted. All of our times. You, some of you, that's why I told you, one day in the house of the Lord is <laughs> like a thousand in the world. Try to understand. For them it might be 8 p.m. When yours is different. When you start working under heavenly calendar, you automatically redeem time. Because every 24 hours in His presence, you redeem a thousand in the world. Every 24 hours in the right thing, you redeem a thousand in the world. Every 24 hours understanding the right, you redeem 20, a thousand. Before you know that, 
I told people by the fourth day in the presence, you've already redeemed eight years. It's possible. I'm showing you how. You've already redeemed eight years of your life by the fourth day in the presence of Almighty God. So some say, ah, but me things don't come early. You're not in His presence. If you abide, me know. If you stay present to me and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatsoever you will. But it's not yet time for it. He said, if you abide in me, the word there is me know. The word there for abiding means staying present. If you stay present with me, and my word stay present with you, he said, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It's possible. Me, I'm helping somebody, I don't know who, but there's somebody who is getting it. People are going to redeem days. In a few weeks, in a few months, in a few years, people are going to look at you and not believe it. That that was the woman. That was the man. Already I see things are changing. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me? In the Old Testament, he sent men ahead of them. In the New Testament, the man can redeem time and go ahead. In the New Testament, a man can redeem time and go ahead. And go ahead. And go ahead. There's a pastor who has been pastoring people for 30 years and they have 20 members. 20. 20. There's another one who has struggled for 10 years and they have 15 members. And the difference between these two men is simple. One may not know how to redeem time. To get in one year what others get in 20. That is why I tell you, many of you, where men retire is going to be your beginning. When men say, now we are retired at 80, at 70, some of you, your beginning. There are people here who think you are finishing. Listen, I came to tell you, you're just beginning. When I started this, the Lord told me when my beginning will be. So when I tell you that we've not yet begun for Nero, believe me, I know where I'm supposed to begin. I know where certain men are going to end. What then may I begin? <laughs> there are some people who say, I'm the most successful. I told people, it's very easy for God to sort this. He doesn't need to take the rich man's money. He can give you more. And the rich man stays there. There was a time, one million shillings was a lot. And having a million shillings was a lot. And a time came when a million shillings was too little. You understand? There was a time men bought houses at 50,000 shillings. Now 50,000 cannot even take you through two days. God doesn't need to take what they have. He can give you where above than they have. Get to your feet. I want you to take a minute and just make a prayer. Speak in tongues. Arrest a moment in just a few minutes. Come on, take this moment sensitive. Listen to me, saints. Something is happening in your life. You are about to influence your next 10 years, your next 15 years, your next 3 years, your next... You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. Speak another tongue. And Omega.
redeeming time. We give you all the glory. Bring them. 
just watch the wires. Put them in front of you. There's a very strong anointing. I don't care whether it bewitched you. I don't care whether they tied you. I don't care what words were said. Just put them there. Power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, neighbor. Oh. God is separating people. Nations are calling you. Ministry. Carry some of those people. Bring them here. Bring them here. Hey, 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 there is an anointing here, there is an anointing here, hey, 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 listen, some of you they say it, you will never amount to anything, your father said it, your grandmother said it, but I came to tell you, there is an anointing, Deeper than your father's words. Deeper than your grandmother's words. Deeper than your auntie. Deeper than any form of witchcraft. They say you'll never have children. You'll never be successful. You're going to fail. I decree and declare. That is not your story. That is not your story. That is not your story. Hey. Listen, God is going to use you to touch the world, to change nations. Hey, hey, hey. listen, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Listen, there are ministers here, ministers. You have been having a spell of being stuck. God tells me to tell you something just broke in the abyss between heaven and earth. Doors are going to open to you, favor is going to follow you, money will follow you, wisdom will follow you. I know who I'm talking to. Wherever you are, the Holy Ghost, whether you're in the overflow or you're near, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, that stuck prophetess, I call out your gift in the name of Jesus. Nations will hear you. The airwaves of radio, television, they will hear your voice. Some of you have been stuck in your family receive for your family today say for the sake of my father's house things they have never seen are going to start to be seen things they have never heard are going to start to be heard in my father's house and I want you to say this word let them begin with me say it Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Listen. If you're here <laughs> and you've never given your life to Christ and you say, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, put up your hand and we lead you into a confession prayer. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. God bless you. God bless you. Another one. Another one. God bless you. Put up your hand. Put it up. You're accepting the Lord of Lords. Accept the Lord Jesus today. 
Put it up. Put it up. Thank you, Lord. Say today I'm changing my identity. Put it up. Say I'm accepting the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. If you put up your hands, I want you to repeat this one after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior of my life. That you died and rose again. From today, I'm born again. Amen. If you have made that prayer, come and see this gentleman. Talk to him. We shall follow you up. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Oh, yeah. Go back home. Tell your neighbor, I'm so hot. I'm on fire. I'm not praying for anyone. If I lay a hand on you, you'll mean to say that what I've preached doesn't make sense. It's unbelief to come for prayers. Let what we've prayed be enough. Somebody say amen. Go home. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International.
For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Venero. Venero. Make manifest. Thank you.